uh, with the uh, for the song tonight, and uh, just ask you one more time if you feel up to it, if you can, as we will honor the reading of the Word of God, Psalm 23, and we'll be looking at verses 1 through 6, primarily be focusing on verse 2 tonight, or a small portion of it. The Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparedest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for ever. Father, again, we thank you, dear Lord, for all that you've done and who and what you are. We pray that you bless the message to our hearts and our ears this evening. Help it. Help us, Lord God, in every step of the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, and please be seated. So tonight, guys, we're going to get into part five, part five of our Psalm 23 series. And uh, part five, we're looking at, uh, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And we'll get into that here in just a little bit. And uh, so, beloved, thus far, what we've seen in the other portions of this series, we, we've seen that Jesus Christ is not just a shepherd, but he is a sovereign Savior shepherd of the world. He is the good shepherd. He is the great shepherd. He is the greatest shepherd that we've seen. And, but in all of those things, he is our shepherd. That's the beautiful part of it. So the same Lord who created uh, the heavens and the earth, the same Lord who is our protector, our provider, our healer, he is our righteousness, he is our shepherd. So by being all these things to us, the chief shepherd devised a way to protect his sheep, that, that we would remember, uh, guys, that the sheep were part of his sheepfold. So remember last week, uh, those of you that, that were here or got to catch up on part four, we are his sheep in his sheepfold. And in order to provide... For them, being the sheep, he gave them a shepherd, which is the pastor of the local church. So remember, the sheep are the people, the sheepfold is the local church, and the shepherd is the pastor of that church, all of which the great chief shepherd, Jesus Christ, is above and over. So having said all that and reviewed all of this, I want us to remember that, and what we spoke about the sheep briefly last week, uh, we're going to touch more on that. We see that we are the sheep of the chief shepherd. So the Bible tells us in Psalm 100, in verse 3, Know ye that the Lord is, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. In Psalm uh, 80, verse 1, Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, that thou that leanest Joseph like a flock. In Psalm 79, verse 13, So we, thy people, the sheep of thy pasture, will give thee thanks forever, uh, we will show forth thy praise to all generation. And then Psalm 95, verse 7. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand, today if ye will hear his voice. So, beloved, anyone who raises sheep, anyone who has been around sheep, they know that, that sheep are peculiar animals. We covered uh, quite extensively last week about what sheep are, why they need a shepherd, why the sheepfold is so important, which is the local church. Uh, I'll, I'll say this, a sheep or a Christian is never going to grow outside of the local church. You will never grow on YouTube, okay? You're not going to grow as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ without a local church. Now, you say, preacher, hang on a second. What about uh, the countries that are destitute of, of Bible-believing local churches? I understand. I didn't say that you couldn't... Um, uh, learn about the Word of God. I didn't say the Holy Spirit won't give you wisdom, and I will say this, the Holy Spirit also knows whether or not you've got a local church in your area, amen? And the, local, the Holy Spirit will work with people who have no other way and no other means to get inside of a local church, and He will have mercy and grace on them, all right? That's none of you, okay? You have a local Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church right here, amen? You have one in Nancy Moore. You have one in, uh, in, in Cardiff called Calvary Baptist Church of Cardiff, amen? And I know we have loads of churches around here, but just because it's got a church on there or it says chapel on there doesn't mean they're teaching and preaching the right things, do you understand? So the sheepfold is important. But sheep are peculiar. Sheep are are different types of animals. They're, they're unlike dogs. They're not like cows. They're not like pigs or even cats. They are peculiar animals, and we talked about that. The first thing we know, that sheep are sensitive. 
Sheep are very sensitive. You know, again, we're going to be looking at verse 2 here where it says he makes me lie down in green pastures, but we're not quite there yet. There's a reason the Lord does that. It's because sheep are very sensitive. They are, they are effective, easily to stress in other situations, which may or may not come in, uh, you know, to into their lives. And keep in mind, sheep are prey animals, okay? Uh, many times, uh, they will react to something that's not even there. Oftentimes, sheep do things that they ought not do by thinking, by assuming, or acting upon uh, a given incident which is not even present. Now, I'm, I'm still talking about the animals in the field, right? You don't understand that. But we do the same thing. That's why God did not liken us unto a tiger, a lion, a bear, but a sheep. Do you understand? Pray animals. There has probably been more division and more church splits in, uh, in, in the world today over what someone assumed or thought happened. Why? Because we're sheep. We're sensitive. We get offended at the drop of a hat. Sheep, you know, I, I, mean, I, I mean, I've heard it for years. Well, he was preaching that at me. i got news for you guys. Your pastor, past, present, and or maybe future, does not know every single thing that happens in your life. But I'll tell you who does, God knows. And if your pastor preaches something that stomps all over your feet and you walk out limping, suck it up. That's your fault, amen? That's not his fault. If your pastor's privy to that and, and he does it on purpose, shame on him. Let the Lord kick him senseless. He shouldn't be doing it. But I am going to tell you this tonight, guys. If I preach something from this pulpit, I am not singling you out because we had a conversation in the hallway or in my office, all right? I don't operate like that. But I will tell you this, the Holy Ghost knows. I had a youth minister one time get aggravated at me uh, because of, uh, he met with me on a particular subject, and, and, uh, and I preached on Wednesday night, and it linked into it, and it beat him senseless, and he came to me all, you know, upset, and uh and I said, brother, I said, listen, I, said, I'm, I'm, I told him, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little bit of range right here. I'm going to give you a little bit of leash, a little bit of a rope on your leash. And I'm going I'm to ask you this. What makes you think that the Lord didn't have me in the subject to help you of what I was going to be preaching on that week? And he goes, I'm sorry, Pastor, I never thought about it that way. And that was exactly what happened. That was exactly what happened. But because he's a sheep and he was sensitive, he came to me all riled up because thinking I was thinking what he told me. It was already in my notes by the time he and I talked. You understand? Sheep succumb to a bacterial disease known as pastoralosis. It's also referred as shipping fever. Okay? And what it is, it attacks the sheep when, when they're under stress and being shipped from one location to another. Fever sets in, and it follows by respiratory uh, d difficulty, many times leading to pneumonia and other symptoms and disorders. They're sensitive animals. I know we ride by them and see thousands of them along the hillside, and we think that, you know, that, you know they're okay, they're fine, they're living out. In the they're not. They're very sensitive, and they, they succumb to all kinds of different uh, types of diseases that they're sensitive to. Antibiotics today, obviously, is administrated to them as a primary, uh, 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 as a cure. But the primary cure for the ship in fever, believe it or not, you know what it is? It's rest and isolation with or without antibiotics. Whether they're given the antibiotics or not, it's rest and isolation that the sheep need in order to get past it. In the days of David, there were no synthetic antibodies, obviously, to give the sheep. Yet the shepherds knew the cure for this type of disease, this type of illness, this thing that was brought about from the nerves. And you know what it was? Laying down and resting in a lush green pasture. So sheep are sensitive, guys. Sheep are sensitive. Secondly, guys, sheep are, are shallow-minded. They're shallow-minded. I want you to remember, if you will, from last week, and, and uh, you know, we asked, how many performing sheep have you ever seen? Now, again, I asked that question. I've never seen them in the circuses. Maybe you have. But I've never seen a performing sheep. I've never seen that myself. Sheep have a tendency to be unteachable. And this is not to say that they're untrainable, but we, we as sheep need to be reminded many times over and over and over and over. Pastor Ellis used to say that repetition is how you learn. And we see it so many ways in our own lives today. How, how many times have you, have you found yourself in a situation that you had been in multiple times before? 
How many times have you done the same thing over and over and over? And you got the same results over and over and over again. And you just refuse to make the changes. We're shallow-minded, guys. Now, there's some people that seem to, to be worse than others. I understand that. And they just continue to get into the same situation, have the same problems, same issue of life. And, and they sit back and they say, well, man, I just don't understand why in the world. I just don't understand why I'm in this situation. Because you did the same thing the first ten times that got you yourself in that situation. That's why. Amen? It's, it is that simple. Guys, sometimes we just have to go back to the basics and understand that one plus one equals two. Okay? Simple things in our life. I had a friend of mine say to me the other day, they said, uh, man, why don't you buy those people a watch? I was like, what are you talking about? He goes, well, maybe that'd be, be the church on time. And I kind of chuckled. I laughed. And fair play to him. He's always there early. He is. And, and, uh, and he's like that. And I appreciate it. And every time he and I meet up, he's always early and uh, at least on time. And, and I appreciate that. But, you know, uh, you know, guys, there comes a time where you just need to make the adjustments in your life to be where you need to be at the appropriate time. Or... Guys, understand that there, I mean, I know Carol left her house at 10 till 5 to try to get down here because of the grim traffic up there, all right? And uh, so, so she, she made the adjustment to get to church tonight. Um, I mean, I know she was coming early because we were having a little bit of, we were having our, our Q&A uh, before church. I understand that. But she had to leave at that time because of the horrendous traffic up there in this never-ending road construction on the heads of the valley, I'm pretty sure that they ain't never going to make it to the feet of the valley and get this work done, man, on the heads of the valley, you know? By now, they ought to at least be down the backside of the spine, but who knows? Anyway, um, I'm saying all that to say this, guys. We have to be reminded, and some people are worse than others, I understand it, but we have this repetitive act of malignity in our life that seems to be present sometime or another. It's because we're likened unto these sheep. The greatest reason for the continuing act of really and truly of refutation among sheep is found in Paul's letter. Hold your place there in Psalms. Uh, hold your place there in the 23rd Psalm. And look over to Romans chapter 3, and we wonder why we continue to make the same mistakes over and over and over. Again, I say this. one Number one, the Lord likens us unto sheep. Sheep are shallow-minded. But in Psalm chapter 3, and look at in verse 10, Psalm 3, look at in verse 10. Uh, you know, very familiar passage of Scripture, I understand that, but it, but it goes on here. Notice what it says here. Romans chapter 3, verse 10 says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are, all, they are, are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher, with their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of ass is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Uh, their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. Verse 18 says, there is no fear of God before their eyes. And you say, whoa, that, that is harsh, preacher. I worked my way up to verse 18. Beloved, David said in Psalm 55, verse 19, God shall hear and afflict them, even if he that abideth of old seal it, because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. Now again, I, I didn't say sheep were untrainable, but many a times there's always that one, two, three, or four sheep in their life. They, they become unteachable. Why? Ultimately because there is no fear. When we possess a fear, much less a fear of God, Guys, uh, you know, and we'll cover that either at the end of tonight's lesson or, or uh, maybe next week. I think I may split this one in half. You'll have changes in your life. You understand that? I, I, was, I was on my little annual rant about the grass not being mowed around the community with Miss Carol earlier. And uh, I read the statistics that only 6% of crime is charged in the UK. 6%. Chances are... Now, obviously, they're not referring about tickets because everybody gets fined if you're a half a mile over the speed limit because you've got a camera. But only 6% of the United Kingdom of, of crime is actually charged. And I told her, I said, you know, if I was in charge of this area here, if you get an ASBO or if you get something, you get something wrong, you get a month of cutting the grass. And you're going to get out there with a sling blade and cut it, not a lawnmower. Okay? You do this long enough for a month's time, every single week, cutting grass, you'll stop acting like a fool out there. You know why? Because you're going to have fear of getting caught and get back out there and actually do some manual labor, you see. Guys, when there's a fear present in our life, the gossiper will stop gossiping, all right? 
Uh, when there's a fear, the, the smoker stops smoking, the drinker stops drinking, the liar stops lying, the sluggard stops his laziness, and the rebel will stop their rebelling. That's what fear does. I, I follow this account called Scary Underwater. And it has these sharks and all these things that my soul, you know, and everyone, I don't even want to get in a pool, swimming pool now by seeing some of these things. But I'm telling you, there's a fear. When you possess a fear in your life, it will teach you to do the right thing. Do you understand? But one of the problems we have, because sheep are shallow-minded, we often forget, and we lose that fear of God. Number three, we find that sheep are very susceptible. They're very susceptible. Again, sheep have no natural defense mechanisms, guys. Uh, uh, they're, they're vulnerable to attacks. They're vulnerable to spiritual attacks. David said in Psalm 17, verse 11, uh, they have now compassed us in our steps. They have set, a, a set their eyes bowing down uh, to the earth like as a lion that is greedy of his prey and as it were a young lion lurking in secret places. That is not a sheep. Do you understand? Evil does this and sheep are susceptible to lions and they're predators. We are sheep, our prey, guys. Peter says in 1 Peter 5 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. So we have, a, guys, we have a solution, do you understand? We have a, a remedy. You say, well, preacher, you're telling me tonight that the Lord likens us unto sheep. He is likened us unto sheep. He's the chief shepherd of the sheep, all right? So he's provided a green pasture for us to get some rest and relaxation, some isolation, and some recuperation in. But he's also given us a shepherd inside the sheepfold for the sheep to teach you to do what? To be vigilant, to be sober, because your adversary, the devil, is walking around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he wants. Watch this, may devour. You know, he, guys, listen, he's, he, can't, he can't devour everyone. Do you understand that? Good night. The Lord, look, look at the limitations that Satan had with Job. God said, I, I go ahead, take everything away from him. He says, I'll do it, and he'll curse you. He goes, go ahead, take it, but don't touch his body. And Job ever, lost every single thing he had. Lost his kids, lost his possession, lost, his, lost everything. Him and his wife left alone. The devil comes back and says, hey, listen, you touch his body, he'll curse you. He goes, go ahead. Touch his body, but save his life, spare his life. Job was pushed further than anyone else in our holy scriptures to have a reason and a justification to curse God. And he said, naked I came out of the womb, naked I go back, Amen. He said, I brought nothing in this world. I'm not going to take anything out of it. And he sat there in a pile of ashes with boils all over his body with a pot shirt and scraped them. And for an entire week, didn't say a word with him and his so-called friends circling around him. Think about it, gosh, for just a second. God has a limitation on him, but he's also given us a shepherd to tell you to be sober. You know, be aware, be alert, be in your right mind, amen. Don't walk through this world like everything is just, you know, unicorns and rainbows and cotton candy and everything is just going to be fine. Know where we are in the world today. Be vigilant. Pastor Ellis used to hammer that word vigilant, that we should know what's going on in the community where we are. And understand, guys, that our actions has consequences. Why? Because we are susceptible to what we are around. You are not going to fill your head up with rubbish and then go out there spiritually minded and think that you're going to win somebody to the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not going to half step yourself inside the sheepfold and think that you're going to learn the Word of God. You're going to be just as illiterate of the Word of God as you are today, six months from now, if you don't apply yourself in the house of God. That's it. I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm not trying to be mean. But if you come in here and you're unteachable, you're not going to learn one thing. You're going to hear me yet around. In all the verses on the screen, you're going to hear all of those things. But unless you take it on board and do some, unless you are vigilant in your life with the Word of God, you're going to be in the same place now as you were seven years ago. Why? Because we're susceptible to what's around us. And we have to understand that the enemy is going around us in the world today looking if he can devour you. And it's not always the destruction of your life that brings the devouring in. It's not always uh, 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 the, the ultimate tragedy and the complete collapse of your life and financial devastation and health devastation and all the world. That's not what it is always. It's a little bitty things ticking away. 
little bitty things, little bitty distractions. And what you give way to, what you open the door to is what you become in your life. You understand? You chill out. Guys, look, you tell me what's important, but don't tell me with words. Show me with actions. Amen. We're susceptible to too much in this world today. We give ear to too much propaganda. We give ear to, to too much in this world today that's simply not true rather than getting in and trusting the Word of God for what it says and what is written. We're susceptible. Which brings us to point number four. We're strollers. See, what does that mean? We're strollers. I probably, in the day and age now, I should have used the word scrollers because I think it's the same thing, same principle. But guys, we as sheep, we're, we are prone to wonder, guys. I mean, we're reminded of this every single day of our life, and especially when we sing that famous hymn. Robert Robertson writes his hymn, uh, come thou found. I love it. And I know that we, I wear it out for our offertory hymn on Sunday. One of the reasons I do, because I absolutely love it. Amen. We're singing, we're singing higher ground again this coming Sunday. I apologize to Daisy today when I sent her the hymns over. I said, I know we just sang this two weeks ago, but I just want to sing it again. Higher ground. Amen. And, I mean, and I know that, but, but prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it prone to leave the one I love. Have you ever wondered why? It is so easy to stroll away from God, the creator of the universe. Now, you may be saying, well, I'll preach I wouldn't stroll. Really? Really, man? Yeah, have you, ne- you mean to tell me you've never strolled? You, if you say that right now, you're strolling right now. Amen? You can say all you want. We are strollers if we're not careful. We have sheep-like traits. The sheep are prone to wander around. And we do, we see it in our world today. We're subjective. Sheeps are. Sheep are. Point number five. Sheep are dependent creatures. A trait that uh, many have refused. Um, they rejected, they rebelled against. Um, people want to feel as if they're not dependent and and but the, at the end of the day guys we are another part of the conversation we were having before church is you know we we live in this as much as i love technology i equally hate it because people in the church well, i just catch up with it online that camera right there and that internet right there and that computer is never going to fully fe- fully replace the coming together of the local church never it's an alternative when people are sick. But just like I mentioned a moment ago, the Holy Spirit of God knows where you live. They, he knows your address. He knows the country he placed you in. He knows the time and the era of where you live. Do you understand? So you're not living in China where it's illegal to have a Bible, even though they print them there and ship them off to these other countries. He knows that you're not in a middle, the Middle Eastern uh, nation where uh, Christianity is illegal and you get your head lopped off because if you have a Bible in your possession. He knows that. He knows you're in the United Kingdom. You're in South Wales. You're in the heart of a valley uh, who's had some of the greatest revivals in the history of the, of the modern church. Amen. He knows that. Amen. And he knows that you ought to be in the house of God. But we're... We, we don't want to act like we're dependent upon anything. We, we don't, as, 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 as Christian, as sheep guys, we want to think that we're solely independent and we can put it on our shoulders and we can carry it. I'm okay, you're okay, and I'll read my Bible and I'll get what I need. No, you won't, because that's evident when you say that. Anybody that tells me they don't need the local church is evident that they need it more than somebody else, amen? And again, you say, well, preacher, you know, we just, listen, God knows where you live. He knows your address. He knows your postcode. He knows what church is in your area. Just get your tail up off the, off the study and get into church, amen, and get a hold of the Word of God and get involved, amen. Get involved. We are subjective and we need, when you will finally come down and admit, I need God's people, I need God, I need the local church that God set up, man, your life, your life will be so much better. 
I mean, just admit it. Finally, submit to it. When we lean the sheepfold or when we're looking for another sheepfold, we're only practicing the natural abilities of sheep. We're leaning on the natural man. And we've seen this in people in the past. We've seen it in others who have a reputation of bouncing to one church to another and one belief to another and leaning on this doctrine and another and going here and here and here. Zero stability in their life. And you know what those people are? They're evidence of why God called us sheep. They're, they are in the same spiritual place today as they were a decade ago. One of my greatest fears, one of my greatest fears coming out of, out of uni, coming out of college, still chasing that dream for football, you know. And the, the main reason, the Lord, I believe, put this on my heart, I did not want to be in the same place 12 months later. I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to be chasing that dream. I didn't want to be cut from this team and go to another team, traded here, traded there. I didn't want to be that guy. And there's guys that, done, that did that. There were guys that did that. They chased the dream, and they made it, and they got into the NFL, and they were there for years on end, and praised the Lord for them. I didn't want to be that guy. I wanted to sink my teeth in a career, and I wanted to pursue that thing. And God blessed it. He blessed me with having our own, our own practice by the time I was 27 years old. My soul, man, I was 25 years old repairing odontoid fractures. 26 years old putting uh, skull pins in people's uh, 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 head to stabilize a type 2 hangman's fracture. You understand? I know 30, 35, and 36-year-olds now that, they're, that they're, what they're doing in life is some people's hobby, amen. Why? Because they refuse to admit that they are subjective. They refuse to submit to what they are. You understand? We need one another. We need the Lord Jesus Christ. You need a pastor. You need a sheepfold. You need the chief shepherd. You need the church. You need those things, beloved. Sheep are dependent, yet oftentimes distracted, put in our, uh, themselves in grave danger. And we need to understand that tonight. We need to know that this evening. So remember as we said before, if sheep, if sheep are rolled over, we said this last week, maybe due to a fall, they can't right themselves. They sit there like this right here. I've read, I've read records of where they've, dr they've drowned before because they've gotten on their back before they're sheared. And all that wool and it's stuck just like this. It's crazy. You haven't said all this, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close here. We're going to save the rest for next week. Next week will probably be quite short, but we'll hit our three main points next week. Tied it into Psalm 23, verse 2. And much of which I know tonight was review. I understand that. But it's easier for us to understand why sheep get stressed out. And, and guys, and it, in turn, they get sick. It's easier for us to understand, looking at those five things, why us as believers are so easily moved and become spiritually sick. And the pattern goes, so, you know, sensitive creatures. I mean, guys, something affects us rather easily. Some, some things are unwarranted. Some things are unattended to. But, but, guys, once the sheep are easily affected because of a shallow mind, we're all susceptible, result of strolling out of the sheepfold. It's our sensitivity which convinces us to make the same mistakes over and over and over again. And as soon as that sensitivity kicks in, people react naturally rather than spiritually, by skipping or leaving or laying out, at the end of the day, you find out they've learned nothing. So guys, we've been given strength by the chief shepherd. Understand that. We are considered sheep. That strength is going to be exacerbated within the fold, giving us the needed protection, becoming dependent upon the chief shepherd, the great shepherd, the good shepherd, the greatest shepherd, our Lord Jesus Christ. So, beloved, we need to understand tonight, if we can, and we'll close here at this point. We'll get into the, the last of the, those sub-points, into our three main points next Wednesday night. But what I want you to take away this evening is much a review from what we said last week. The Lord knows what we need, and the reason he maketh us to lie down in green pastures is because we are susceptible to that sickness. We are sensitive, and we need that time, that rest. We need that isolation. We need to be put there so that we can get rid of that sickness and we can be strengthened but guys you cannot be strengthened outside of the sheepfold the safest place for the child of god to ever be in their life is right not only in the center of god's will but right inside of the local church will you bow your heads tonight 
Father, we thank you, Lord, for who and what you are and, and all that you've done. We pray that you'd bless the message to a heart and, and, and uh, ears of all the hearers this evening. I pray that they take it on board, dear God. And I ask you tonight, dear Lord, if you will, as we continue next week in this lesson, Lord, please just take it to our hearts, Lord. Let us apply it into our days, dear Father. Let us understand that, that we as sheep, as you have likened us so, uh, Father, we are easily moved, Father, but we understand you've given us a pattern. You've given us the solution. And, and as we look into the security next week of that solution, uh, Lord, have you allowed us to, to lie into those green pastures? Father, I ask you to please prick our heart, touch us, dear Lord, tender us, and bring us, dear God, right next to you in everything that we say and do. Lord, we love you. We ask you to bless the, the time afterwards, Lord. I pray that you give us all travel mercies home. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. I do hope and pray the sermon you just heard was a tender blessing to your heart and to your soul. I hope that it gives you the encouragement, edification to face the challenges that we see each and every day and week throughout our life. I'd like to invite you out to one of our live services here at Saren Chapel in Abraman. We are located on Lewis Street as well as Davis Street. Davis Street is the entrance to our chapel and as well as Lewis Street is the entrance to our hall and you can use either one of them. But secondly today, guys, I would like to share just a brief message to you now to ask you to where you are going in eternity. If today was the last day you were alive, if today, by some tragedy, this was the last moment you had on this earth, when you closed your eyes, would you wake up and see Jesus Christ? It is a simple question, guys, and it is even a more simple answer. The Bible tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, paid the ultimate price for mankind. He gave us the free pass to eternal life by giving his life on the cross of Calvary, being buried into that grave, but rising again on the third day. It is simple as this. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You see, guys, while we were sinners, the Lord Jesus Christ loves us so much that he gave his life. As a matter of fact, Romans 5, 8 tells us, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Sin is defined as the transgression of God's law. But what happened was the payment with, for mankind is death. Romans 6.23 clearly tells us, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So I ask you today, what would, what would stop you right here, right now, from bowing your head and saying a prayer much like this, Lord Jesus Christ, I trust in you. Jesus Christ, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, and I believe that you stepped up out of the grave to give us victory over sin and victory over death. I invite you into my heart and ask forgiveness of my sins and ask you to lead God and direct me throughout the rest of my life. Now, here's the thing. You say that prayer in your own words, but you have to say it and believe in it. Remember, Romans 10, 9 says, And believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That is a promise from the word of God. That is a promise from God himself. That is the promise from the creator of all things, that if you'll believe on Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, ask forgiveness of your sins, accept his free gift and pardon of sin into your heart today, that you will be born again, that you will have eternal life in heaven. Guys, I hope and pray this is a blessing to you today. I hope and pray that you'd make that decision. And if you have, if you've made that decision today, let us rejoice with you. Come by and see us here at the church or hit us up online at any of the social media outlets or through email or however you can. Just share with us the glorious transformation that you just received in your life. Guys, I hope to see you soon in the house of God. I hope to see you soon right here in Sharon Chapel. And may the Lord be with each and every one of you. God bless.